Kitco Mining Special Coverage of BMO's 33rd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. JD Resources technology is so compelling. The company has raised over 200 million from tech, BHP, Mitsubishi, to name a few. CEO and co-founder is Mike Outwin. Mike, welcome to Kitco. Great to be here, thank you. Tell us about uh, the copper technology. Why is it hitting? Well, Jetty was a company built to unlock vast stranded copper resources using our, our catalytic technology. The reasons why um, we've got traction is it's a, it's a very low capex technology, uh, integrates seamlessly with existing operations. We're able to leverage their already existing leach systems to, to unlock copper. Um, and you know, I, I think the problem that we're going after um, is, is, is palpable for the industry. 70% of the world's remaining copper resources are entrained in low-grade primary sulfide materials, which have been uh, trapped for many, many years. And so for us to be able to unlock that in a low-cost way, um, and with low capex, as I mentioned before, that's a big deal for the mining industry right now that's focused on, 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 on capital and, and how it deploys you know, that at projects. And additionally, you know, we're able to produce cleaner copper um, basically because we're turning waste resources into, into reserves. Um, for every pound of copper you produce over uh, with us on the, on the leach side, you're driving down your emissions and your water consumption profile for the entire asset. So those are all movers for, for um, mine owners these days and, and we're happy to help them produce additional copper. Historically, why haven't copper companies been able to process the primary sulfides? Sure. So, um, hi historically, the mining industry focused on uh, oxide resources that are at the top of a deposit normally, um, and then secondary sulfide uh, resources that are below it. Both those are amenable to acid leaching. Um, the, the copper comes out relatively easily. For the next layer, and, and by far the biggest layer of, of uh, mineralogy in these deposits, primary sulfides, when you try to oxidize that material, there's this thing called the passivation layer that develops around um, the mineral. You can think of it as a, a force field that blocks the copper from leaving the mineral in, in any large amount, maybe 10, 20% is the maximum extraction that you can get from it normally. Our big innovation with our technology was creating this, um, this catalyst that removes that force field if it's already there and a physical layer that's already around the, the mineral or for fresh ores, make sure it doesn't uh, form at all. And so the technology, you can think of it as a key. It unlocks the door of this ore to allow the copper to exit. Mike, could you uh, talk about why this is meaningful? Can you talk about the potential value for the market uh, that you could unlock? Sure. So 70% um, of the world's remaining copper resources are, resources are entrained in primary sulfides, low-grade yeah. primary sulfides. So the mm -hmm. future for many large mines is, is this type of ore. Um, and so uh, years ago, we, we, we had a total adjustable market study done, done by a group and, and, and they um, assigned trillions of dollars of, of value to that material. Now, it, it comes in many different forms. So there's mines right now that have leach capacity from oxide plants and, and secondary sulfide plants that they'd used previously that now have a lot of latent capacity um, that they could fill up with leaching of primary sulfides. You have mines that have concentrators but don't have leach. Um, they can, they can put it, potentially put a leach plant there and produce a significant amount of additional copper production. Um, and then you've got future projects, greenfields, that um, are thinking about building a concentrator, don't have any plans to put in leach yet because they don't have enough oxides or secondaries to justify it. And historically, primary sulfides weren't available to leach because of this barrier I mentioned. And so we're working with them to add leach to the mix so they can build a concentrator and have a leach plant participate in all price cycles. And so you can see this technology is really applicable across the copper spectrum. Um, many different assets, many different deposits, many different um, uh, operations and projects in different phases. One of the, the sort of key initial opportunities seems to be the ability to react to actively apply this to existing operations that have that existing infrastructure just bolted on or something of that nature. That's right. We call them plug and plays. We are able to go to the, the site, put a Jetty Catalyst Addition facility on top of the solution line that's carrying the leach solution up to the top of the stockpile um, within less than a year, uh, inject the catalyst into, into the solution. The catalyst propagates through the, the stockpile or the heap leach and goes after that ore that's been sitting there. 
unutilized for many years and, and is able to boost copper extraction again from, from that asset and fill some of that latent capacity that the plant has. We, we look at those as extremely low capex opportunities, low operating cost, um, fast, there's no permitting required uh, to, to operate there. And, and, there, and there's the, the, the environmental angle again. You're once again adding additional copper pounds to a site that have already been paid for from an emissions and water usage profile to take it out of the pit, stack it there. Why not you know, use it better? Why not get more copper production Recycling out of it? an old copper mine. That's Here's right. It, yeah. That's absolutely right. You, at, some, at some mines, you can produce a mine's worth of copper at an already existing asset, meaning you don't have to develop a new pit necessarily. So it's a very, very exciting proposition for many companies. So in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, the copper world is talking about, you know, this year they're going to enter into a copper deficit. Depending who you speak to, that's going to grow to 10 million tons per year by 2035, 2040. Um, will this make a big impact into that? Is the potential of these kind of technologies yet already being sort of factored into the market or will this be something new that uh, will appear later on in the estimates? I, I think it'll appear later on. You know, our technology can certainly make a meaningful impact. It's not going to fix the, the the copper supply demand gap um, that that's forming in the medium to long term. Um, we can we can produce enough copper to to uh, have a, have a, an, an enormous copper production profile uh, that I think many companies would be envious of. But at the same time, we our our view is that copper. Um, production is going to need to increase significantly to get to a point where, um, you know, there, there, there's not real supply um, issues. And so it's going to take a, a, an all of the above um, solution strategy. I think there, there, there's going to be recycling that needs to um, be, an, be an increase of, uh, you're going to have additional mines that need to be brought on, many optimizations at existing mines, um, and, and the use of more technology. I think our technology has a big part to play and is and and commercial now and is, is a very near-term you know, option to lift up that copper production, but it's gonna, take, it's gonna take a lot to get to where we need to go. You're working with some of the, the biggest names in the industry. Um, what, what are some of the milestones you and your partners have set over the next year or two? So we're working on the construction of our Jetty Catalyst Edition facility at the El Abra mine, owned by Freeport and Cadelco down in Chile at the moment, looking to commission that this year. Um, after that, we've got a, a couple of exciting uh, deployment opportunities that are in engineering right now and commercial discussions at some of the world's largest mines. And it'll be very exciting to hopefully deploy those in the next couple of years. So as a company, we're very, very focused on executing on the delivery of this technology into the field at these big, very high quality assets and in advancing beyond this initial commercialization phase that we've been in for a few years um, where we proved that the technology worked at scale multiple times and, and, and have a lot of confidence in it now. And it's all about going to the next stage, doing it at a much, much larger scale and truly having a big impact on the, on the amount of copper that we can yield for the industry. Uh, Mike, uh, how would you uh, rate uh, the mining sector in terms of actually being able to embrace uh, new procedures or new processes? Have they been open generally to kind of look at new ways of doing things, or is it can be kind of hard to make a move? I think it's a learning process. Yeah. I, I, think, I think the industry is increasingly acknowledging that they need uh, innovation, that they need new technologies, and, and the industry is learning how to do that. Um, and, and so we're helping them. With that process, we've been around for 10 years. Uh, we've been working with our, our partners at, at BHP and, and, and Tech and Freeport, who certainly do get it. Um, they've been investing a lot in innovation and, and do recognize these uh, new processes and technologies are going to be required to keep their production um, at its, its, its rate right now at their mines or, or to grow in the future. And they've shown a commitment, I think, in investing in us as a company. Uh, in, in the belief that technology and innovation is necessary. Um, and so we've, we've certainly really um, enjoyed working with them. I think the industry a, a, as a whole probably has you know, a bit of work to do um, and, and, and is, is showing signs of heading in the right direction. Um, I think that the, the real pioneers and leaders are um, our investors, Freeport, Tech, and BHP, and, and, and Mitsubishi. It certainly does seem that partnership is now very much part of the vocabulary of the miners. You know, amongst themselves and with external 
external uh, technology companies, whereas in the past it perhaps wasn't so. Everybody wanted to do their own thing or their own projects. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Um, look, everybody has, has their own core competencies. For us, it's technology development. Um, we excelled at research and development. We uh, were able to develop a technology that, that works great in the field. Um, and that took millions of dollars of, of, um, of, of design and, and research and, and study um, and then deployment and learning. Um, and there's you know, operators and, and partners that do other things you know, very, very well. Um, Jetty at this point is, is, uh, you know, enjoys its role as, as, as being a technology company and being able to provide that, that expertise to, to our partners in the field. Um, and for us to be able to leverage what they're so good at, running these, these operations, producing significant amounts of, of copper production, finding new mines, optimizing new mines, you know, those, those are the things that we're excited to, to partner with them on. Uh, you had an interesting announcement uh, with BMW as uh, being an investor as well, too. And I, you, there has been uh, past reports as well of uh, automakers coming in and then uh, supporting uh, the copper space. But I'd be interested in the rationale for that uh, for um, uh, BMW, because it would seem that it'd be so far downstream. Sure. I, I think it's access to cleaner copper. Um, you know, we're, we're able to unlock this stranded resource that is really considered as, as, as waste. Um, and so if you're able to take that, 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 that legacy material and for the already spent emissions and water consumption at, at the mine, um, bring about a significant additional amount of, of new copper production. We think that currently the jetty process is, is the best way to achieve cleaner copper right now. Um, and, and so I think you've got groups such as BMW that are interested in having cleaner supply chains, access to metals that, that have a, uh, a, a a good profile, you know, and, and, and putting those in their, in their end products, their, their vehicles. You mentioned earlier that um, one of the benefits or things you can take advantage of is the infrastructure, the sunk cost there, but I think you also mentioned the sunk environmental, the carbon footprint, that, that's already been spent or allocated, and so the, the copper you would produce would be relatively free and clean from that point of view. That's right, that's right. We, we have this, this line that we say at Jetty all the time, uh, we're turning waste streams into revenue streams, right? That, that's, that's one of the, the, the principles that um, we were focused on start, when we were starting the company is, is, is this efficiency um, element, being able to, to, to make a process better, being able to access uh, better uh, environmental profiles uh, by running an operation better and, making, and being able to, to, to make it more profitable, right? When those two are interconnected, there is a desire um, oftentimes to, to deploy more. Uh, and, and so they, they, they play off each other and, and end up creating a better dynamic. In a commercial application situation, um, how does Jetty get rewarded? Do you get like the equivalent of a stream of the production that then you can dispose of as you see fit? One of our principles as a company is, is value sharing. So we've got a technology that makes projects happen that otherwise wouldn't. It's enabling technology. We think that um, because of that, we, we, we deserve to share in the, the, the value that's being created by the deployment of the technology. And so there's several different methods that we utilize to, to access that value. Uh, we work with our partners in, 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 a, in a very open-minded, transparent way to, to bring about the right mechanisms, you know, pricing, pricing the technology, participating in, in that value that we're creating so that both parties do really well. Mike, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. My name is Michael McRae here at the BMO Conference for Kitco Mining. Kitco Mining special coverage of BMO's 33rd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.